Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Jacob's Ladder. The 1990 frightening and disturbing psychological thriller about a Vietnam War veteran named Jacob Singer whose life turns into a journey of hell between strange hallucinations and reality. And this is the film that pretty much inspired by many others that, that follows, including the video game, which later became an adaptation from 2006 called Silent Hill. Yeah, Silent Hill. Yeah, I love the first movie, quite honestly. The sequel, of course, wasn't that good. And many others that followed, too. Because this was considered to be the most shocking and scary films of all time. I should know because when I first saw this movie, I didn't see this in theaters, but I saw this uh, on home video. Yeah, you know, my parents rented this movie and I had to say, when I started seeing all these disturbing scenes, you know, of, of Jacob you know, going around, you know, like in the subway train or, or any of the other scenes that went into it, especially the, you know, when they were dancing in the apartment. I gotta admit, I, I had to run away. <laughs> I had to run into my room, you know, trying to get away from that scene. Um, I'm not kidding. You know, these, these scenes are so strongly disturbing for a film like this. But I can see what they were going for, because this is... A, a psychological horror thriller that ever got made by writer Bruce Joe Rubin, you know, who gave us Ghost and several others. So this was interesting. With yeah, with Adrian Lyne, you know, the director of, of Fatal Attraction, Nine and a Half Weeks, and Flashdance, to come up with something this clever and such frightening results that. I never thought that a director like him would wind up doing something this scary, but it worked. And that's why I enjoy this movie a lot. So anyway, it stars Tim Robbins, who was in so many uh, comedies back in the 80s and some dramas, such as uh, Howard the Duck and, of course, uh, Bill Durham with Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon, which, by the way, at the time, you know, they both got married you know, before they they got separated later on. Elizabeth Pena, who just passed away recently. Yeah, she wanted to do films in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, she was everywhere back then. Such as the TV series that was short-lived called I Married Dora. Which, of course, that was a series in which uh, shows the, the conclusion which suddenly... <laughs> happened out of nowhere, but it knew it was going to happen anyway. Yeah, it got cancelled really quickly. You can find that scene in on YouTube to, to know what I'm talking about. She also was in the movie called Lombamba, along with uh, Batteries Not Included. Yeah, she played a pregnant lady in that one. Yeah, as well as Down and Out in Beverly Hills, and, and of course, Rush Hour. Yeah where she played uh, a cop who happens to be uh, Chris Tucker's uh, partner. I believe. She's also the, the girlfriend, too. But I know, you know, Chris Tucker's partner is <laughs> Jackie Chan. Anyway. Danny Aiello, you know, who, who was fresh from movies like uh, Do the Right Thing and, and all the others that he's been doing. You know, he, he's a great actor, and he's always been. Yeah, and this performance definitely proves it, especially for that key, key element that you saw in the movie. You know, who played a cop? Matt Craven, you know, who has been in several films, a lot of movies like Crimson Tide and and all the others. You know, he's he's been doing a lot of films for years, and I'm glad he's still working. He's a great actor. Who Taylor Vince? Jason Alexander, of course, from Seinfeld. He had a short role in this movie as the lawyer named Mr. Geary. Yeah. 
Because I always love Jason Alexander. He's, he's always funny at what he does. Because he also was in the movie you know, Pretty Woman that same year. Yeah, well, Seinfeld was already on the air. Because he was doing commercials mostly. Patricia Palimber, Eric LaSalle. Yeah, he's, he's been in TV shows. I know I've seen him. In the ben Rains, of course. It was one of his earlier roles since uh, this is before he was in films like Pulp Fiction, you know, where he played Maceus, and all, all the other roles that he's been going on, yeah, including Mission Impossible. Uh, Brian Tarantino, Anthony Alessandro, Brent Hinckley, Paul Gass, who, yep, happens to be the same actor who, who wants to becoming uh, part of uh, Temptations D. Which Jack Brack, of course, is the, the lead singer of it. Yeah, it was a band. Yeah. Louis Black, Harry Lane, and Macaulay Cogan in a very uncredited role as as his son, Gabe Singer. Yeah, and this was before, you know, Home Alone actually came out that year. Yeah, it came out just a few weeks uh, after Jacob's Ladder. So, yeah. yeah, it's written by by Bruce Joel Rubin, yeah, who wrote Ghost and several others. He even did the movie My Life with Michael Keaton. He directed it by the way. And Adrian Lyne, once again, who directed uh, Fatal Attraction, Nine and a Half Weeks, Flashdance. And of course, a decent proposal, which I wasn't a big fan of, and, and unfaithful. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't been doing any movies um, a lot lately, but but unfortunately, he is going to do one called Backroads. So this is his upcoming project. The movie begins set during the Vietnam War on October 6, 1971. An American soldier named Jacob Singer, who's played by Tim Robbins, is with the, the 1st Air Cavalry Division, which, you know, that was part of his unit, who wants up coming under heavy fire from the tree lines in the Macon Delta. And suddenly, his comrades are one up getting killed or even wounded. And even worse, one of the soldiers winds up getting a catonic and horrific seizures. Which that includes the Ben Rains character, you know, already you know shaken up uh, horribly in a very uh, scary way, where suddenly the blood started to come right into his mouth. It, it's really completely scary. But then all of a sudden, Jacob winds up uh, freeing into the jungles until he got stabbed in the stomach by some unseen um, soldier. So all of a sudden, Jacob walks up in the New York City subway train in 1975, already being dressed up as a U.S. male postal worker, you know, reading a copy of The Stranger in his hands. Suddenly, he winds up uh, getting lost inside. It was already uh, empty, but only a few uh, passengers inside. And he was trying to find out where the streets are since he overslept you know he must he suddenly got lost so he finally left outside the subway train and everything was all abandoned and locked up so suddenly he started seeing some strange things going around I mean even after he got out of the train you know, there was a tail inside he almost nearly got run over by another subway train only to spot a lot of demons going around inside the train so that's where it gets really scary completely then it started to shift back and forth between his chaotic memories of Vietnam as well as his memories of his late son you know named Gabe Singer who's played by Macaulay Colgan in an uncredited role which later in the film you, you probably already know that his son got hit by a car after riding a bike prior to the war that happened. And, and his ex-wife named Sarah, who winds up being present at the life of a mailman living in Brooklyn, with a postal clerk named Desi, 
an abbreviation of Jezebel, was played by Elizabeth Pena. He's been experiencing a lot of grotesque hallucinations that's been going around, maybe as a result of post-traumatic stress disorder. And he's been facing more direct threats to his life. So, but all, all of this started to happen even worse when all these hallucinations become extremely bizarre by, by only to find out that he's not the only one that has this. Yeah. In fact, one of Jacob's old army friends named Paul actually experiencing the same symptoms that he was going for. They started seeing all the demons, you know, going after them. And that's where all all hell starts to break loose when Paul actually wants up inside his car and explodes. Yeah. Yeah, and of course a, a chemist, you know, who wants up following Jacob all his time. Yeah. Who's played by uh, Matt Craven, by the way. You know, who actually saved him from the fire that happened and you know, he'll probably explain what, what was going on. That's that's happening to him and everybody else. Anyway, after the funeral, his surviving play two mates confessed to Jacob too that they've been experiencing all the hallucinations that they've all been having. And they're trying to seek the truth about the incident through legal processing. So they wound up meeting a lawyer named Mr. Gary, who's played by Jason Alexander, who at first says that they had a case, but then wants up backing out after determining that they would never even been in Vietnam. So that's where, so that the whole thing was that they've been discharged during the war game training in Thailand. So that's like, wow, Some, something was really going wrong here. So Jacob's comrades abandoned the idea and, and he wants up being kidnapped by government agents trying to silence him. Wants up getting thrown out of the car you know, after trying to escape from him and wants up landing on, on the corner where you know, Santa Claus was there. <laughs> and which Santa Claus wants up stealing his wallet. Then he gets picked by, by a local hospital, only that it went straight inside to the journey world of hell where a lot of you know, grotesque body parts coming around and a lot of people on top, which are basically, you know coming from the mental ward or so. There's even a shot of a guy who just got, you know, shaken up like he started shaking his head, you know, in four frames at a time. You know, it, it was, yeah, all covered up and he has no legs and everything. That was scary. Uh, that 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 seemed kind of frightened me even more, but it did frighten me when when we get to the early scenes. I'm gonna mention that later. But Jacob's friend who's actually a chiropractor named Lewis, who's played by Danny Aiello, who we saw earlier in the film, you know, just, you know, basically, you know, giving him, you know, just, you know, fixing himself, you know, cracking all the bones, you know, to the right place, because, you know, he's been having back problems and, and neck uh, pain. Well, anyway, he, there was a, a key moment in the movie where he actually cites uh, the 14th century, uh, Christian mystic named Miser Eckhart, and this is one of the huge moments in the film where he mentions about Eckhart saying he saw hell too. He says the only thing that burns in hell is part of a view that won't let go of life. Your memories, your attachments, they will burn them all away, but they're not punishing you. He said they're freeing your soul, so you're frightening of dying and you're holding on. You see devils tearing your life away, but if you make your peace, then the devils are really angels, freeing you from earth. And that line alone had to be one of the most shocking, terrifying lines I've ever heard from a movie like this. And it worked. It really worked because we know exactly what Jacob is going to, and that's where everything seems to happen in his life. So then, for him to solve this problem, he winds up um, meeting a chemist, which we saw earlier in the film, who got saved by an exploding car named Michael Newman. You know, and he's actually the same man who winds up treating his wounds in the medic helicopter in one of the scenes in Vietnam. 
He also claims that part of the symptoms that they're all getting was a an experiment where he tried out one of the monkeys that had suffered from this too. So they thought that this was going to be part of an army's chemical warfare. So they had to create a, a perfect symptom called the ladder, which is a drug that increased aggression, taking claim, taking people straight from the most primal urges. So the only way to actually fix you know, Jacob's problems is to, um, which sad to say, this scene had got deleted um, in the Blu-ray and DVD releases. So thank goodness, you know, I got to see the deleted scenes on that set. Although I did saw the deleted scenes online too, on YouTube, so it's good to know. That he actually created an antidote in order to um, to block the ladder and and fight all the demons out of out of his mind. So he won't be able to uh, deal with this crap. And I know and then and then it follows all the others beneath his path. So but it leads to the final climax, which I'm not going to give it away. But it's it's the climax where you know what's going to happen to him once this whole thing you know, disappears. But this movie, without a doubt, is one of the scariest, creepiest, disturbing, and frightening movies I've ever seen. And I can't believe that this movie alone became an inspiration of, of other horror films and video games and all this stuff that follows and it, it really works it, it, it's so mind-blowing as it turned out to be even for a nightmare that he was getting you definitely feel sorry for Tim Robbins uh, character you know, Jacob because you know the fact that he's you know he's been going through all all his journey for, for life, all the shit to hell. I mean, he tried. He did have a good life, as it turned out to be. You know, when he hanged out with with his ex-wife Sarah, you know, with with uh, three boys, including you know, Gabe. Yeah, just sad that he lost his son you know, during. And it was one of the most saddest moments I've ever saw in the movie. Was when. When uh, Gabe got run over by a car you know, after riding his bike, and and they had a lot of moments where you know we see Jacob you know teaching his son to to ride a bike and everything and you know, and all this other stuff. You know. And I gotta say, Macaulay Culkin did a very good job you know playing that role as Gabe. In fact, I remember that one scene in the movie you know which I think it's part of the dream or so was when. He just got up after a nightmare that he had, yeah, which had, which was a scary nightmare. You know, he's already having a temperature of 106, and he, and Jesse wants up uh, calling all the neighbors, trying to relieve him from, because he was about to die already. They want up turning on the, the bathtub, you know, putting cold water, and put a lot of ice all the way around, with with all the neighbors helping him. And he was burned completely. <laughs> and while he was inside, and, and he wanted to, yeah, you know, he needed help completely a lot until he woken up. And, yeah, that's sort of. Not to mention that that strange, disturbing scene in the movie, while he was dancing with everybody. You know, Jesse was dancing with another guy. You know, bumping and grinding, and, and suddenly it reveals a wing of a bird. Yeah, a very strange. Um, bird and pumping Jesse, you know, and suddenly the horn actually went into her mouth. I mean, that was, oh god, that was a scene that I actually ran into the room. I was scared. Completely, I was really scared when I saw that scene. Yeah. Anyway, but the, the one scene I was talking about was when, is when uh, Gabe was saying, don't go. Leave the door wide open like that. Just a little more. That was a cute moment right there. It was great. Yeah, and, and you'll probably find out in the end of the film. I'm not going to give too much away, but you'll know what's going to happen. 
But nevertheless, Tim Robbins did a great job, you know, playing the role of Jacob. I'm surprised that they wouldn't get a lot of actors to play that role, including Tom Hanks, which he wound up doing the film, you know, Bonfire of the Vanities, which I, I didn't care for. But I think <laughs> I would imagine Tom Hanks being in that film, though. But no, Tim Robbins did an awesome job. It, it worked. It was definitely his great performance. Elizabeth Pena, you know, was also good in the film. You know, playing Jesse, you know, and I think she was hot. I know there was a nude scene in there. And she was definitely the perfect uh, choice for the movie, you know, because you never know behind her secrets. You know, considering that she is, of course, a um, Jacob's girlfriend and co worker at the postal office. You know, she wants to. You know, doing a lot of things to him in that sort of way. Yeah, and there was one frightening scene where, you know, while he was reading the book on all the the demons and all this, you started seeing a, a terrifying face of him when she was saying, Uh, wake up! Uh, is anybody there? Hello? And then, and then he was like shooting up and, and he was saying, Who the fuck are you? I mean, and I know he, then she got all mad at him and telling him, enjoy your fucking life, and that sort of way. And she left. That, that, that's also creepy too. A lot of creepy stuff. I, I still wish they didn't delete all the scenes in the movie that's on the Blu-ray and DVD release that I bought, which is right here. And by the way, the transfer looks amazing too. It's not, you know perfect as it seems, but they did a great job uh, for Lionsgate and have all the good extras here, even the feature rep that they had, uh, which explains about the film, and all of the beautiful shots they did. Definitely what I, I knew what Adrian Lyon was doing, and the, and the shots were a lot of, you know, humans and demons, you know, shaking their heads in four frames like this, and, <laughs> and all that, I mean... That, that was so scary, and they, even one of the demons, yeah, with the hospital um, crew, and one of them didn't have any eyes to, or, or what seems maybe wrapped up, and so trying to give him a shot in, in his forehead, and where he was screaming, "I'm not dead, I'm alive." Yeah. And I know Jesse was in one of those shots. Well, I mean, this is one trippy film I've ever saw, especially if this was part of the experiment that that Matt Craven's character was coming up with you know, that was going to test on monkeys. And it just <laughs> and a lot of a lot of stuff going into it. It's definitely one of the scariest films ever made, and, and surprisingly very underrated film. That I, I wish this movie got credit deserves. And I heard they're going to do a remake of it, too, a loose remake, which I don't know how that's going to turn out. But nevertheless, I, I will stick to the original, because that's exactly what the film is going for. Now Bruce Joel Rubens is an excellent writer. He knew exactly what he was coming up with about the movie between life and death and all this time that, that follows it. This is pretty much part of you know, his journey to for hell and he, and he wants to find a, a better way to escape from this so he won't deal with this anymore. But also uh, Danny Yellow did a tremendous job playing the chiropractor, Lewis, because that key performance right there really suit the film justice. It's like you just really want to have a friend like, like Lewis, you know, just <laughs> while, well, you know, cracking your neck, your, your shoulders and <laughs> your back. You know, the perfect color practice you want. So, it's a very frightening movie. I definitely recommend it, but be aware you're going to be frightening for life once you see this. It, it's really, as I say, it's, it's a very scary horror film, but you'll never regret it. It's, in fact, it's the best uh, horror psychological thriller I ever saw. And Adrian Lyne, he did a very good job doing this. So 
it's definitely your best work. So anyway, I give Jacob's Ladder a solid psychological thriller, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.